everyone, this is Izzy at Minerva. In today's video, we are starting a brand new series all about how to draft your own bespoke block for your top, your bodice block. This is really exciting and I know that a lot of you are really, really keen to learn how to do this. In this video, I'm going to talk you through how to accurately measure your body and then how to use set calculations to draw up your own body block based on your own body measurements. By the end of the video, we will have a lovely bespoke body block, which is completely bespoke to your own body measurements. Following that, in the next series, we'll then start to look at how to accurately sew up your body block so you're getting it as accurately as possible. And then following that, we're then going to take a bit of a deep dive into checking out how to adjust the fit of our block. Now, I am not expecting your block to fit you absolutely perfectly first time round. And that's why we're gonna go through the process of creating a twirl and then looking at the fit in further detail. In this series, we are going to be using centimeters throughout the whole series rather than inches. And that's just because consistently across the whole series that we're doing about creating your own body blocks, we're going to just use centimeters. As is always the case when we're pattern drafting, we only ever pattern draft half of our body. Imagine there's a line like coming down your center front, we're only gonna draw that half, and once again, a line down the center back, and we're just going to draw that half. The reason why we only draw half is simply to save ourselves a lot of time. Once we've drawn half, we can then flip it over, mirror it over, and we've got a full body block. And as ever in this series, in order for you to follow along really simply and easily, we've got instructions down at the bottom of the key points that you need to note in terms of uh, calculations or measurements or accurately drawing things so that you can refer to those. And don't forget that throughout the whole video, you can pause, take screen grabs, you can do whatever you need to, come back to a certain point, and just to take it at your own pace as you follow me along today. If you've got any questions, you can always post them below the video. And of course, we here at Minerva will get back to you as soon as possible. In order to follow along with the pattern drafting course, you're going to need a number of supplies as some of them are out in front of me here. So to start off with, you're going to need some tracing paper. You're also going to need um, some plain paper to be able to draw your block onto. You may prefer to use spot and dot paper or possibly the hemline squared pattern paper. Both of these options are really good for drawing out your body block because they help you with dimensions and lines. You're going to need tracing paper to trace over your block and to create your patterns. Obviously, you're going to need a tape measure to do your body measurements and to draw up some of your pattern alterations as well. You'll need a pair of sharp dressmaker scissors or a rotary blade to cut out your fabric. So we've got some calico here. Also some pins just to sew up your calico twirl. And then while we're actually looking at pattern drafting, you're going to need a pattern drafting ruler. <laughs> we would also recommend a sharp pencil for drawing out your block. I will be using uh, fat marker pens in my uh, filming, just so you can see them clearly in the screen above. And then finally, you're also going to need your dressmaker's carbon paper and your tracing wheel so that you can transfer your body block line markings onto your calico. So we're going to start off by doing some basic body measurements and I've got my lovely friend Kirsten here with me to help me today so that you can see the measurements that you need to take. Now I would recommend that you do have someone help you with these measurements simply because some of them are at the back and they're quite tricky to get to. So let's start off with our very first one. The first one we're going to do is our waist measurement and I would recommend that you grab a little piece of elastic and just tie it around where you think your waist is. So with Kirsten, I think it's around here, but I'm just going to get her to do some checks for me. So what I want you to do is pop your hands here and just bend to one side slightly and where you feel that um, kink in your body between your hips and your waist, just keep your hand there. Do the same on the other side. And we can see that that is where her natural waist is. You often think your waist is lower. That's your low waist. This is your natural waist. It's where the break in your body is between your ribs and your hips, okay? So once you've got that, tie a little piece of elastic around there and make sure it's nice and straight. We're then going to grab our tape measure. And arms up, thank you. <laughs> Grab our tape measure. We're going to be working in centimeters as usual with these videos. Wrap that around the point where the elastic is. Pop your hands back down again and take a big breath for me. And one more. Great, and breathe out. 
So I'm checking that I can fit two fingers around the tape measure at this point. So she's got the ease that she needs to be able to breathe and release again. Okay, great. So take that measurement as you see it and make a note of it. The next measurement that we're going to do is our bust measurement. So this is across the full area of the bust. So this also needs to be a nice straight line. So grab your tape measure and pop it across the fullest part of your bust. Now, Kirsten, if you wouldn't mind just holding that in place around the widest bit of your bust, that's great. Okay, so just make sure that's nice and straight. And we're just gonna pop you around halfway so you can see. And again, oh, I'm going to walk with you. <laughs> It's not quite straight at the back, so I'm just gonna lift that up and make sure it's nice and straight. Okay, great. Let's turn you back around again. We're going to do what we did for our waist. You can pop your arms down now by your side now that we've got it fixed. Big breath in and back out. Great. Just make sure that you can run two fingers between your body and the tape measure and take that reading. Now, when we're pattern drafting, one of the most important aspects is really understanding where everything is sitting on our body. So when we're drafting our bodice, we need to know where the apex of our bust is. Now, the apex is the fullest part of the bust. So Kirsten, I'm gonna ask you to pop two fingers where you think that is, and you're just going to measure across like that. The next measurement we want to do is across our chest at this point. Now this is not a circumference one. We're not going to be wrapping the tape measure all the way around her like we did with the bust. We literally just want to pop the tape measure across her body at this point. Now then, this is the across across chest and we're going from just underneath the armpit to just underneath the armpit at that point. So you, it's where the arm meets the body at this point here. Okay, and usually it is, just manhandling you around here, aren't I? Usually it's around seven centimeters from your collarbone, which is up here, down. So on Kirsten, that sits at about there. Take the measurement across. Hers is actually a little bit lower than that. So as we said, everybody's shape is different. So you take yours, pop your fingers into your armpits at that point. The next measurement we're going to do is across our back. This is just a one straight line from armpit to armpit. So Kirsten, if you just bring your hands up, you can see the junction of her arm with her body at that point there, just under there and under there. So pop your arms back down again. We've got our armpits here, nice. And we're going to pop the tape measure and just pop it into that armpit there and into that one there at that point with a nice straight line. Don't forget to take your measurements in centimeters. <laughs> Our next measurement is going to be our shoulder measurement. So the first thing we need to do is to find out where our shoulder point is. So actually, if you just come over here, we can see the slope of her shoulder here and our arm, our hand along her arm coming up to meet that point. And that's where her shoulder point is, where that junction is, where the two meet together. Some people also describe it as, imagine if you were skiing off your shoulder, at which point <laughs> would you then sort of ski off um, rather than continue straight on your shoulder at that point. So you can, you can see it and you can feel it at that point. Now you can tell where the neck hits the shoulder because if you run your finger down your neck where it stops going down, that's the junction there at that point. And you can sort of feel that if you run your finger down your neck like that. So grab your tape measure, pop it up by your neck point up there and then run it down your shoulder so it's nice and straight until it hits your shoulder point at that point. We're now going to do the arm side depth measurement. So this is checking where the bottom of your armpit sits in relation to the nape of your neck, which is up here. This is that bone that we've taken and used as measurements in the past. So what we've done here is we've just wrapped a piece of elastic um, around Kirsten's body so that it's sitting nice and um, wedged underneath her armpit. So it's just sitting right there. And then that gives us a nice straight line to take our measurement from. So Kirsten, if you tip your head forward, we've got the nape of her neck right there with that bone. So find that bone location there. You can bring your head back up again now. And then take that measurement down to the elastic at that point. For Kirsten, that's 21, but for you, it will be something different. Our final measurement that we're going to do is our nape to our waist. So this is from your neck down to your waist. Now, if you've already got your nice piece of elastic around your waist, you've got a good reference at that point for you. Now, once again, the nape is up here. Kirsten, if you just pop your head forward a little bit more, you should be able to feel it. You can use a washable pen <laughs> just to mark where that is if you want to. 
I'm not going to do that for Kirsten today, but we know that it's exactly there. Make sure you're really confident as to where that point is. Grab your tape measure and start it there. Now, this measurement is a straight measurement. We're not going to curve it and follow the curve of her body like that. We're just going to let the tape measure hang at that point. You may just want to get down and take that reading exactly where it hits the waist at that point there. And that is your nape to waist measurement. Okay. Okay, let's get straight into it. You're going to need your body measurements and a piece of paper, a sharp pencil and a ruler and a calculator to start off with. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to be using marker pens so that you can really clearly see my drafting lines and my final lines. And um, I would thoroughly recommend that you um, sharpen your pencil and use that to draft out your body block. And that just ensures you get loads of accuracy and also you can rub off any mistakes. <laughs> So on the screen in front of me, we've got my bespoke body measurements. I've just printed these off here. So these are my critical measurements. For you, your dimensions here will be different, but I've just got them here so you can see as I'm doing the maths, which calculations I'm using and which measurements I'm using too. To start off with, we're just going to draw a nice rectangle. So with the piece of paper in front of us, our neck is going to be up at the top up here, neck and shoulders, and this is going to be our waist down here. So we're going to draw the back block here, half of the back block here, and the half of the front block on this side. So to start off with, we just need to draw a nice rectangle. Now across the top of the page, this is going to be half of your bust so take your bust measurement, which is for me 89, divide that by two, and then add five centimeters. Draw a nice straight line across the top of your sheet of paper, and this should be the top of your block. Draw it to the dimension that you've got on your calculator. For me, it's 49.5. For you, obviously, it will be something different. Next, we want to draw the length of our top body. So this is from our neck down to our waist. So I want you to take your nape to waist measurement, tap that into your calculator, and then add 1.5. And whatever that measurement is, I want you just to square off from the top and draw a nice neat line that's perpendicular to the line you've just drawn at the length that you need. And now we're just going to square that off to make a really nice rectangle. Now, if you're using cross and dot paper, you will find this process a little bit easier because you can just use your dots and your crosses as a guide. I'm then just going to label the line down at the bottom and say that it is our waist line. This line down here will effectively become our center back. So you can label that one up too. And this will become our center front. So we can label that with a CF for center front. Perfect. Okay, so we've now got our basic block um, shape sorted, the area that we're going to draw our block in. And now we're going to start doing some maths and work out um, exactly how to draw our body block based on our bespoke dimensions. Now to follow along with this, we've just put down at the bottom of the video and some step-by-step -step instructions. So as I'm talking through, you can just see uh, the critical kind of calculations that you need to do. They'll be really clear at the bottom of the screen. So don't forget, you can always pause your video as you work out your calculations. I would thoroughly recommend that you have a notebook by your side so you can like take note of the calculations before you draw them out. That's always really helpful. So let's go and have some fun. We're going to start off with our back bodice. The first thing to do is to mark a point 1.5 centimeters from this top corner here. Label that new line, that marker point that you've just done, your BN. That stands for back, neck. So effectively, that will be this bit right here, um, which is where we took the measurement from the back of the nape down to the waist. Next, we're going to work out on our block at the back where our underarm needs to sit in the block. So take your arm side depth, which is for me 20.5, add 0.5 to your dimension, and then whatever you've got, just drop a line down from your back and neck, your BN line, at that distance. For me, it's 21. Mark that there. And then you just want to square that line across. 
So I'm just going to dot that on, that measurement across just to make sure I'm getting it really accurate. Obviously, if you've got your dot and cross paper, then you're all good. You can just follow that really nice and simply. So square that line across from your centre back to your centre front. Now this is just a reference line, so I'm just dashing it out on the video. So you can see it's just a reference line, it's not a final line. I'm just using my red pen for that. At this point we're going to start to draw the back of the neck. So this is from your back, uh, back neck bone here, just across to where your shoulder sits. Don't forget that we're only drafting half of the body, aren't we? Um, half of the back, so we're just doing that half and then we can mirror it when we actually do our patterns. So we're going to start up at the top up here and I want you just to mark a point along the top line 6.5 centimetres along. And then I want you just to find a nice gentle curve to join up those two points, a nice soft curve. And now my fat marker pen won't um, follow the line of that curve, so I'm just going to draw it out by hand. Our next measurement is to take our arm side depth, tap that into your calculator, and divide by 5, and then minus 0.7. Whatever that is, I just want you to mark that distance from your back neck down. For me, it's 3.4. I then want you just to square that across with a nice little reference line. Um, so it's half, halfway across the block. The next thing we're going to draw is to draw our shoulder line, which runs from our neck down to our shoulder at this point. You should have that measurement on your sheet. So tap that into your calculator, your shoulder length, and then add one centimeter. Now we've got that length that we need to draw and we want to draw a line that is that long from here down to our sort of shoulder point line. Now for everybody that's going to be different. So you want to pop your a ruler and pivot it up here until you hit the distance that you need along this line. So if your shoulder was only eight centimeters long, you'd pivot it down so that it's at eight. And if like me, you're 13.5, you're gonna pivot your ruler up again, keeping the pivot at that point and hitting the line at 13.5. I'm just going to draw a reference line for that because we still need to add a dart into our shoulder, okay. Just make sure it's clear where the junction is down at the bottom there. So take your, your new shoulder measurement, which was your shoulder length plus one centimeter, and then divide that by two, just to find the midpoint along this line. Mark the midpoint. For me, it's 6.7. With your um, pattern drafting ruler running parallel with the top line here, working from the midpoint of the shoulder, I just want you to drop a bit of a reference line down here. Mark a point along that line which is five centimeters. And then mark a point to the inside of that line one centimeter away. So that's that point there. Next we're going to construct a dart line from the center of the shoulder down to that new point. The dart is going to be one centimeter wide in total. So mark a reference along the shoulder line, five mil to either side of the center of your dart line. And draw a line from the inside of the dart line, the one that's closest to the neck, down to your new reference point for your dart. And make a note of the length of that. So then we want to draw another line along here just to finish off the dart. And the length of that dart line on this side needs to be the same as the length on this side. So make a note of that dimension. For me, it's 5.4. And then join your ruler so that it's um, hitting that one centimeter offset line from the shoulder, from the center of the dart there. And draw a new line to create that dart. Now, what you'll notice is that this side is now raised up 
beyond our reference line for our shoulder. And that's absolutely fine. What we're going to do is join our, the top of our dart here across down to that intersection of that point there. And then we're going to continue the line from the neckline to our other dart line here. What that means is that when we close up the dart, because both sides of the dart are the same length, when we sew them together, they're just going to pivot and hit really nicely. So well done, you've done your neckline and your shoulder. Let's keep going. Next, we're going to take our across back measurement. So tap that into your calculator, divide it by two, and then add 0.5. Working on this middle line here now, I want you to mark that distance along the line. And then just square that line up to your other reference line up at the top. And then I want you just to mark the midway point along this line. So take the length of the line and divide it by two and just mark a point along the line. That's halfway. Next, we're going to take the distance from our center back line to this reference line we've just drawn, and again, divide that by two, and square it down to the waistline. At this point, we've drafted as much of the back as we can, so we're now going to move on to the front, and then the two pieces will then sort of come together and be finalized together, which is quite fun. So we're gonna move on to the front and start looking at the front neckline to start off with. Working along the center front line, I want you to mark a point at six centimeters down from the top. And then working across the top line, Mark a point at 7.5 centimetres from the top at that point. We then just want to draw in a nice neat curve to create that neckline. <laughs> I found one in the middle of my ruler but my fat marker pen won't go into it. So I've just traced it in pencil and I'm going to go over it. I'm going to label this point here FNP which is going to stand for front neck point. Just a helpful little reference as we're going to be working along this top bit quite a lot in a few minutes. Now, the next thing that we're going to want to work out is our bespoke dart size. So this is the dart that takes the volume out of the top and um, so that it allows volume to come in over the bust. So <clears throat> in order to do that, we've got a helpful little table that's going to flip up on the screen now. And you can take a screenshot of this and then work out what your dart size needs to be. So have a look at the table and as you can see it's all based on your bust circumference. So find out which bust circumference um, is closest to yours on the table. For me my bust circumference is 89 centimeters so I'm going to work with the bust circumference on the table of 88.5 and then I can see that my corresponding dart size needs to be 6.1 centimeters. So make a little note of that once you've calculated what you need. Next, add half of your across chest measurement to half of the dart size. For me, it's 20.55. Mark that distance along the dotted line here. And then just square that up as a little reference. Probably only need to go up about 10 centimeters at this point. Next, we're going to work out where the apex of our bust is. So this is the point where all darts sort of align and come to a point. So take your point to point measurement and divide that by two. And mark that distance along this line. And then just square that down to your waistline. Next, mark a point 2.5 centimeters below this line. This becomes the bust point and the apex at that point. We're going to draw in our bust now, and we're going to draw it from our new apex point up to our front neck point. Next, I want you to take your dart width measurement and mark a point that width from your front neck point. For me, it's 6.1. Draw your other dart line from your apex up to that point you've just drawn. Measure the bust dart line length from the front neck point down to your apex, which is down here. Then what you need to check 
that this line, the new line you've drawn, is the same length. If it's not quite the same, and it may not be because your apex may have shifted um, to the right or left of um, you know, where mine is, um, it will mean that you just need to mark a point up at the top that is the same length. Those two dark lines need to be the same length. This is just a marginal um, difference, but it will mean that your pattern is going to line up a little bit better if you can get that marked in. Brilliant. So we've done our neckline for our front and we've added in the volume that we need for our dart at the front as well. The next thing we're going to do is to work out where our shoulder line needs to sit. So we've already got that sort of dart volume hitting um, our neck point here, but we just need to know how long and where that neckline needs to sit. Let's do that together now. Working back on your back bodice, in fact, let's label these up now. I want you to draw a line that is uh, perpendicular to this line here. I want you to take it from your shoulder point here, which is the end of your shoulder, and just drop it down, drop a reference at 1.5 centimeters below that line. I just want you then to square out that line about 10 centimeters from that point that you've just drawn. If you've got a pattern drafting ruler, you can just line up your 1.5 centimeter seam allowance um, with that top line you've already drawn. So just mark a point. Great. Now we're going to draw in our shoulder line and it's going to be the same process as what we did here, except we don't have to remember about the, um, the funny dart. <laughs> so take your shoulder length, for me it's 12.5, and draw that from this point here down to your new line. Don't forget again that you're pivoting from the top of your dart there. If your shoulder length is only 10 centimeters, pivot the ruler to hit this line at 10. If it is um, larger than that, like me, 12.5, just pivot the ruler around until the length hits this line. Brilliant. So now we've done our darts, we've done our neckline, we've done our shoulder line. The other big thing to do now is to do work on our arm side. So this is the bit that goes underneath our arm and would attach our bodice to our sleeve. And because this is um, kind of one continuous thing, we're going to draft this all together. I want you to measure from your front of your neckline down to this line here. Take that measurement and divide it by three. Working with that measurement, mark that measurement up from this line, up along one of your little reference lines that you've done here. For me, it's 5.3. For you, it might well be something different. I want you then to measure the distance between here and here, tap that into your calculator, and divide it by two. Mark that midpoint along the line. Then just square that line all the way down to your waistline. This effectively becomes your side seam. Now what we want to do next basically is draw in the arm side along here like this. However, what we don't know is quite how the curve is going to hit and how deep the curve needs to be at this point down here, and likewise at this point here. So what we're going to do is just to mark a little help point here, which is going to act as like a little touch point um, to help us get a nice curve in at that point. And likewise, we want another kind of point here at this point. <laughs> However, we don't know quite where that help line, where that help point needs to be. So to work that out, first of all, I want you to draw a line that is 45 degrees between these two. I then want you to draw a little help line three centimeters long from the junction there up to this point here. And that is gonna be your little help point reference at that point. We're then going to do the same for over here. So mark out where your 45 degree angle would sit from that junction. And then mark a point this time, it only needs to be 2.5 centimeters. Okay, so next we want to draw in a line that just curves all the way around, touching this point, there, 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 which is our side seam, here, here, and back up here again. So grab your pattern drafting ruler and try and find a nice curve that is just going to join all those things up together. 
and you may well find the inside of the curve of your pattern drafting ruler is going to work really nicely for you or it may be that you just need to play around with the shape of the curve a little bit. Now don't forget that these are sort of reference points and help points. It doesn't have to be um, 100 percent you know, it doesn't have to conform exactly to a curve there. You may just find it easier just to eyeball it. <laughs> um, but once you've got a nice curve that you're happy with, then just draw that in nice and accurately. Excellent. Okay, you've done great so far. What we've done is we've drafted the neckline, the shoulders, the bust and down to the bust. Now at this point, we've just drawn a straight line that goes all the way down to our waist. So if you're looking for a top that has no fit um, at the waistline and you just want it to fit nicely across the shoulders and the bust, but you just want it to drape right down to your waist, this is the block for you. You've done everything you need to do. However, for the purpose of this tutorial, I want to just work a bit more on getting a really refined fit down to our waist as well. So we're going to develop this block just a little bit further to add some darts in at the bottom so it's going to um, fit our waist really nicely and we're going to do that at the front and the back and then we're also just going to shape in the sides a little bit so it nips in at the waist. Obviously everyone's got different body and dimensions so your block is going to look different to mine. Don't worry if you know your dart size is looking much bigger or smaller or if your arm depth is you know looking deeper or higher and um, this is just completely bespoke to me and yours will be different. Great okay let's crack on with our waist definition now. The first thing we're going to do is to mark a point two centimetres below the apex of the bust. And then working along this line here, we're going to create a dart that is three centimetres wide in total. Now there are all sorts of different ways of drafting out your body block, but for the purpose of this demo, we're all just going to use the same standard three centimetre width dart. However, as we get to the fitting process, you may need to widen that dart or reduce it in width, and that's perfectly normal but this is a fantastic starting point for everybody. So mark a point at 1.5 centimetres to either side of the apex line, and then just simply draw in your dart. We're then going to repeat that process of drawing in a dart, working along this line here at this point. So mark an offset of 1.5 centimetres to either side of this line along the back waist. And then create your dart with the point at this top line up here. Next, extend the centre front line down by one centimetre. OK, so at this point we're now going to do a little bit of maths. We've only got a few calculations to do, but what we're trying to work out is what our waist shaping needs to be and how wide our waist needs to be at the front and also at the back. We've only got four calculations to do and I'm just going to pop the calculation requirements next to me on the screen here so that you can just really clearly see that on the screen and follow along with me. Write down your waist circumference. Divide your waist by two and then add three. Write that down. For me, that works out as 40 centimeters, but for you, it will be something different. Then divide that number by two. For me, I'm getting a nice even 20 at that point. Write that amount that's in the red box down here. And then just add 1.5 centimeters to determine your front waist length. Whatever you've put in the red box there, pop it down in this box here and then minus 1.5 centimetres from that amount. So now we know our front waist length, which is up here, and this is the length of our waist. For me that needs to be 21.5, but again for you it will be something different. And my back waist length needs to be 18.5 in total. We mustn't forget to remove the volume of the dart when we actually draw that out. Now at this point down here where we, where we offset um, the centre front line by one centimetre, we basically just want to draw a line up to the centre back. So let's just mark that in now. I then want you just to extend this dart down to that shaped waistband and do the same for the other side. And likewise at the back, there shouldn't really be that much to extend down over here though. This is where our calculations start to come into play. So well, we're going to work on our front waist length first. So we know that this plus whatever this needs to be for me needs to equal 21.5. For you, it will be whatever your calculation says it is for the front waist length. 
I then want you to measure the width of the dart along this new line that you've done here. It will probably just be slightly more than three centimeters. Tap the measurement that you've got for your front waist length into your calculator and then add your dart volume, whatever that is. And now I want you to mark a point along this line that is the amount you've just calculated. For me, 24.7. Then just using a nice sharp pencil, draw in your waistline to that point you've just marked. And then from the um, side seam line here at the armpit at that junction there, just join that up with your new waist. See, it's not complicated, is it? <laughs> We're just going to repeat that process for the back. So calculate your dart width, add your back waist length, and whatever that distance is, offset it along this line from the center. For me, it's 21.6. Draw in your new waistline at that point, and then join it up with the arm side. The only final things left to do are then just to draw in your center back line now that you've got that all established and draw in your centre front. Now, depending on your body dimensions, your block may look significantly different to mine, and that's absolutely fine. If we go back onto the uh, block, what you may find is that your waist at this point is actually overlapping and going over this side, and then the front is also extending that way. And that will be if your waist um, measurement is larger than your bust, and that's absolutely fine, it's completely normal. Don't worry if you've not got a little gap here. So well done on creating your very first bodice block. There was a lot of uh, maths involved in that. There was lots of technical stuff. So you've made a massive accomplishment to get this far so that you've got your back and your front all beautifully and accurately sewn together. As ever, if you've got any comments or questions, we're always happy to answer those here at Minerva. So please do pop your comments below the video um, and we will get back to you quickly. It's been really fun to get our block drawn up today. This is obviously just the starting point and we've got a whole series of episodes that we're going to talk you through. The next one will be all about how to um, take your body block and make that into a pattern and how to sew that up and then we'll follow that with a whole series of videos all about how best to fit your block as well. So we've got lots of fun things in store for you. Please do subscribe to our Minerva channel and keep watching and enjoying all these lovely tutorials. Thank you for joining me today. I will see you next time.